the business session of the December 5th, 2023 meeting to order at 6.24 p.m. All council members are president except presidents, except for Josh Borderud. Uh, we uh, welcome to all of our guests and visitors. We provide an opportunity for the public to address the city council on any agenda item or during the hearing of visitors portion of the agenda. On items other than public hearings, speakers will be allotted one three minute presentation regardless of the number of agenda items the speaker wishes to address. If you're here to speak and have not filled out a registration card, please see the city secretary staff at the registration table outside of the auditorium so that staff can contact you if necessary. If you have handouts, please let us know at the beginning of your presentation and staff will distribute those to council. If you're unable to approach the podium due to physical limitations, a microphone is available to be brought to you. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. item of business is to consider the minutes of the November 7th, 2023 special city council meeting and regular city council meeting. These minutes were provided in your meeting packet. Are there any corrections? Nope. If none, those minutes will stand approved as submitted. First public hearing we have tonight is public hearing 2023-981. Good evening, honorable mayor and council. This is a public hearing in accordance with the requirements of Texas tax code section 312 Point zero zero two C one to consider a resolution readopting the City of Waco residential tax abatement guidelines and policy statement governing the abatement of city's taxes on qualifying residential properties. Chapter three one two of the Texas Tax Code requires that a municipality must adopt guidelines for tax abatement before it can grant tax abatement agreements. Thereafter, a municipality may only enter into tax abatement agreements that meet its adopted guidelines. The municipality is also required to hold a public hearing at which members of the public are given the opportunity to be heard regarding an adoption, amendment, repeal, or reauthorization of tax abatement guidelines and criteria. The current guidelines expire on December 17th of 2023 and staff is proposing readopting the guidelines and the current guidelines and current policy in support of furthering development in the city core. The proposed readopting the, the proposed readoption of the policies and extends the agreement to December 17th of 2025. Once city council has reauthorized the guidelines, the guidelines will be effective through December 17th of 2025. Notice of this public hearing was published in the Waco Tribune Herald on November 4th of 2023. Are there any questions for staff? We will open a public hearing for comments. I have two cards. The first is uh, Mr. Ephraim Herring and second is Dr. Alan Northcutt. I'm Steve from Harry, and I live at 1044 Chestnut. I'm coming to you today because I had a tax abatement agreement with y'all in 2017 on the property of 1146 Chestnut, which now is still vacant. I give to y'all the open records request. I open records request in 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Right now, the house is still vacant because I have not received a proper, a proper certificate of occupancy from the city of Waco. I, uh, so, so in accordance with state law, I cannot live in the house, or occupied house, in accordance with state law. So for seven years, this house, six years, this house has been vacant. And I'm, I put that in front of you because Texas Administrative Code, Economic Re Regulations, Texas Department of License and Regulation, that's uh, Chapter 70 and Rule 70.62 says, 
that the inspector, the building inspector, at my amendment, should issue a stick box in accordance with local adopted rules and regulations. So uh, y'all rules and regulations say I come and send out an open records request, which I've done numerous times. The document that, na that Neighbor Works Waco slash Neighbor House Association provided to me doesn't match what you have on file. So I've talked to several attorneys and they said that we get in a situation now where if the bank, which you are on already and told me, if they fire try to verify that document that they gave me and the city doesn't have it on file, opens up me to a document case. So I'm asking now and I'm submitting again. My attorney said that y'all city manager, y'all city attorney's office said that was a document issue. I want that document certified. Exactly that sign that y'all gave to the works Waco. Because right now, for seven years, I have not received it. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you, Mr. Herring. Next we have up Dr. Northcutt. Is he here? Yeah. Okay, Dr. Northcutt. Alan Northcutt, and you do have a handout with supportive uh, documentation. I want to address two items in the, the building standards uh, in this public hearing that relate to the city's pledge to cut greenhouse gas emissions. You'll note in the handout there's um, a chart from the International Energy Agency, which is very authoritative, um, looking at the increase in EVs uh, in coming years. They project that by 2030, 67% of new car sales, 67% will be EVs or plug-in hybrids. That means they will need a plug in their garage, uh, two, 240 volts. Um, by 2035, that was projected to be 100% of new car sales. So if a house is built today in seven years, it's gonna already need retrofitting and by 2035, it's 100% probability it will need, will need retrofitting. The cost of making this change, or including this 240 plug in the garage right now, if you build a new house, is about $920. If you do a retrofit, it's about $35.50, or three times as much. Further, and it's in your handout, the International Code Council did recommend back in 2020 that new houses built in the U.S. be EV ready. And that means that they have electric panel capacity wiring that terminates in a 240 volt outlet. So this would, um, there's several reasons this would be positive. It would be a cost savings for the homeowner in, you know, over a few years. It would promote Waco housing as, you know, contemporary and up to date. It would promote EV adoption, which is part of the city's goal, as you know, and it would uh, also, from that angle, cut greenhouse gas emissions of the city. Now, the city is working on, um, you know, developing public chargers, but actually most charging happens at home in your garage. So this would be a, uh, a, a very positive change to make. The other change I want to address was there's a quote in here about light bulbs. It says, all light bulbs to be energy savers mid-grade lighting package. Now, to me, if it says energy saver, that could include fluorescent and halogen. In 2023, all new light, you know, light bulbs in new houses should be LED. This is a simple energy saving uh, technique, and this would be very you know, easy to make this change. As we say, the cleanest energy is the energy you don't use. The energy you don't use is cleaner than renewable energy or any other source of energy. So I know it's easiest just to continue with business as usual, but you know, if the purpose of this hearing is to, to try to make advances, I think this is a way to make progress, uh, do things that will cut emissions. So I encourage the city to, to look at these. Thank you, Dr. Northcutt. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak on this item? If not, we'll close the public hearing and I'll ask for a motion. Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion. Please call the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Me? Yes. Carries. Um, the following resolutions were pulled from the consent agenda um, 1021 and 1022. Is there a motion on a resolution uh, 2023 1021? No. Uh, 
mind that there's special wording for this motion. I'm, I move that the city of Waco by one record vote applying to all units of property to be condemned, authorized. The acquisition include the use of the power of eminent domain if such becomes necessary to acquire a 2% waterline easements, a 0.498 acre track, and a 0. 049 acre track to include related appurtenances and facilities needed for said waterline and B, a 0 0.330 acre temporary construction and as an access easement on all properties located at 1000 Schroeder Drive and more particularly described as being situated in the TJ Chambers survey abstract number seven and being a portion of lot seven, block five, Schroeder Industrial Edition, and described in a deed <coughs> to Campbell Girls Partnerships LTD <coughs> as recorded in McLennan County Clerk's file number 20060371173 of the pu official public records of McLennan County, Texas. Said acquisitions all being for the purpose of placing, constructing, reconstructing, operating, repairing, inspecting, maintaining, rebuilding, replacing, relocating and removing water pipelines uh, and related appurtenances and facilities needed for the improvement of the municipal water system, including the system improvement in the city of Waco for the American Plaza to exchange parkway water line project and approve the acquisition of one 0.912 acre uh, perpetual water line easement and one 1.484 acre temporary construction easement on property addressed as 6200 Industrial Drive for the same project from Rikiko Kubo Allen trustee to the Revocable Resource Trust for just compensation in the amount of $75,000. Second. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Me. Yes, motion carries, and I'll ask for a motion for resolution 2023-1022. I move that the city of Waco by a record vote authorize the acquisition, including the use of proper, including the use of the power of eminent domain, if such becomes necessary, to acquire a 0.039 acre permanent water line easement to include related appurtenances and facilities needed for said water line on property located at 1513 South Valley Mills Drive more specifically described as being situated in the TJ Chamber Grant, City of Beverly Hills, Texas, and being a part of Lot 1, Block A, Eckerd's Edition, being all of a tract of land described in a general warranty deed to Enrique D. Santiago, DBA Argent Group, recorded in instrument number 20190148839, deed record in McLennan County, Texas, said acquisitions all being for the purpose of placing, constructing, reconstructing, operating, repairing, inspecting, maintaining, rebuilding, replacing, relocating, and removing water, water pipelines and related appurtenances and facilities needed for the improvement of the, of the municipal water system, including the system improvement in the city of Waco for the South Valley Mills water and sanitary sewer improvement project. Second. Motion second, any discussion? Please pull the council. Yes. yes. Aye. Holmes. Aye. Ewing. Yes. Meek. Yes. The motion carries. The consent agenda includes resolutions 2023, 982 through 1023, with the exception of 1021 and uh, 1022. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? Move for approval on the consent agenda item. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Yes. Rodriguez. Aye. Holmes. Aye. Ewing. Yes. Meek. <clears throat> Yes, the motion carries on to ordinance 2023-1042, 1024. An ordinance amending ordinance number 223-625 to provide for a new effective date of October 1st, 2024, providing a several ability clause, providing a savings clause, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for an inclusion in the code, providing for an effective date, and finally determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. This ordinance comes to council on first reading. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Discussion? I'll just quickly say what I said this afternoon. I think it's a good idea to hit pause on this. Uh, it's the street fee, the implementation of the street fee. Um, give us a little more time to get the science right and uh, something new. The calculations are complex. So we're working out the kinks and we want to be responsive and appreciate the collaboration with the community on this and nailing down the math. Any other discussion? Please call the council. Fairfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Uh, 
Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Meek? Yes. Our motion carries. We'll move to ordinance 2023-1025. An ordinance revising chapter 18, division 3, sections 18-163 and 18-167, repealing all sections 8, uh, 18, 164, 165, 166, and 168 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Waco regarding the City of Waco's Texas Municipal Retire System, TMRS benefits. Number one, adopting non retroact repeating COLAs for retirees and their beneficiaries under TMRS Act Section 853.404F and F1. And two, authorizing annually accruing updated service credits and transfer updated service credits. Repealing all ordinances are parts of ordinances in conflict herewith. Providing a savings clause, providing a several building clause, providing for inclusion in the code, finding and determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed, is open to the public as required by law, providing for effective date. This ordinance was approved by a 6 0 council vote on first reading on November 7, 2023. Is there a motion? Approval on second reading. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Meek? Yes, the motion carries on to ordinance 2023-1026. An ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, providing the Code of Ordinances be amended by revising section 28-247 and chapter 28 zoning of said code. Provide the zoning map shall be changed that certain property described as Track 7, J Chambers TJ Edition, known as a portion of 3126 South 12th Street, shall be changed from R1B district classification to become and be designated to 03 district classification. Providing for penalties, providing a savings clause, providing a several building clause, and finally determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. This ordinance was approved on first reading on November 7, 2023. Is there a motion? Move for approval on second reading. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Fairfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Meek? Yes, that motion carries. We'll move to ordinance 2023-1027. An ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, abandoning a 15-foot wide alley located in Block 3 of the Morris Edition to the City of Waco, McLennan County, Texas, according to the plat thereof, recorded in Volume 63, page 112 of the deed records of McLennan County, Texas, and consisting of a 0 0.067 acres, finding no duty to maintain, authorizing the city manager to execute quitclaim deeds, providing a several ability clause, and finally determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. This ordinance was approved by a 6-0 council vote on first reading on November 7, 2023. Second reading. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Meek? Yes. The motion carries. We'll move to ordinance 2023-1028. An ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, providing the code of ordinances be amended by revising section 28-247 and chapter 28 zoning of said code. Provide the zoning map shall be changed that certain property described as Lot 21, Block 2, Beverly Place Edition, known as 1710 South 23rd Street, shall be changed from R2 District Classification and become and be designated to 03 District Classification. Providing for penalties, providing a savings clause, providing a several building clause, and finally determining the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. This ordinance was approved by a 6 0 council vote on first reading on November 7, 2023. Move for approval on second reading. Second. Any discussion? Please pull the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Meek? Yes, I motion carries. And we'll move to Ordinance 2023-1029. Uh, an ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, providing the Code of Ordinances be amended by revising Section 28-247 and Chapter 28 zoning of said code. Provided the zoning map shall be changed that certain property described as a 9.255 acre tract of land situated in the TJ Chamber Survey, abstract number seven, City of Waco, McLennan County, Texas, and being all of tracts A, B, and C described in corrective special warranty D to DSWNs LLC, a Missouri limited liability company as recorded in McLennan County Clerk's file number 2010-008408 of the official public records of McLennan County, Texas. Track C further described as lot one, block one of the Graves edition. According to the final plat thereof, as recorded in volume 919, page 619 of the deed records in McLennan County, Texas, together with a portion of lot one, block one of the equipment depot edition. According to the final plat uh, thereof, as described in volume 127, page 828 of the said uh, DRMCT, same being track A, known as 4300 South Jack Colgen Expressway, shall be changed from plan unit development PUD and C2 district classification and become and be designated the C2 district classification, providing for penalties, providing a savings clause, providing a several building clause, and finally determine the meeting at which this ordinance is passed to open the public as required by law. 
This ordinance was approved by a 6-0 council vote on first reading on November 7, 2023. Is there a motion? A second reading. Second. Any discussion? Please call the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Meek? Yes, the motion carries. And the next item on the agenda is Ordinance 2023-1030. An ordinance of the City of Waco, Texas, providing the code of ordinances be amended by revising Section 28-247 and Chapter 28 Zoning of said code. Provide the zoning map shall be changed that certain property described as lots D1 and E1, Block 13, Chamberlain and Taylor Edition, known as 1116 and 1122 North 4th Street, shall be changed from R2 District Classification and become and be designated as O3 District Classification. Providing for penalties, providing a savings clause, providing a severability clause, and finally determine the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law. This ordinance is approved by a 6-0 council vote on first reading on November 7th, 2023. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Mr. Second, any discussion? Please pull the council. Bearfield? Yes. Rodriguez? Aye. Holmes? Aye. Ewing? Yes. Meek? Yes. Uh, that motion carries. Next is the hearing of visitors portion of the agenda. During this section of the agenda, we provide an opportunity for the public to present concerns or to address issues that are not matters of consideration listed on the agenda. State law says that council is unable to conduct discussion. Um, Tonight, please provide registration information. If you have any handouts, please let us know at the beginning of your presentation and staff will distribute those to council. If you're unable to approach the podium due to physical limitations, a microphone is available to be brought to you. Each speaker must limit comments to three minutes. If you're speaking on behalf of a group of 10 or more individuals present, please have those persons stand at the beginning of your comments and you'll be given 10 minutes to address the council. Please note that if you stand in support of a person getting 10 minutes to speak, you're forfeiting your right to speak on that item. While public discourse is very important to the council, we have to maintain order and meetings so that all persons may be heard and city business may be conducted. So if directed by me, the Sergeant of Arms shall remove from council meeting any person who, while addressing the city council or while attending the city council meeting, makes personal, impertinent, or slanderous remarks, becomes boisterous, or makes unauthorized remarks from the audience, claps hands, stomps feet, whistles, yells, or makes similar demonstrations. Again, state law requires that if, an, a, matter, if a matter is not posted on an agenda, we cannot respond. Uh, we have several cards here tonight. The first is Ken Willits. Ken Willis, 4324 Shady Glen Drive in the best District 5 in the city of Waco. <laughs> um, I came here a couple months ago, four or five, six months ago, to talk about my Waco app. I want to let you know that it's still working, still doing great. Whoever's doing it is doing a fantastic job. Code Enforcement Department is probably the most misunderstood department in the city of Waco. I hear a lot of complaints about it but I work with the code enforcement officers and they are so lenient. They uh, give people one, two, three, four chances. They even go out of the way to help find help for the citizens. So I think you guys should give them a, a great big attaboy, code enforcement. <clears throat> My last topic is loose dogs in the city of Waco. I don't know how much you guys drive around the city of Waco, but there's quite a few of them. And I would love to you have my name, my information, sit down with each and every one of you and talk about things that we can do to help eliminate loose dogs in the city of Waco. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Kim. Next we have David Nushenwonder. If I mispronounced that, I apologize. Uh, I, have, I have reports for you guys, uh, the bite reports for my cause. My case. I stand before you today as David Newenschwander. Once a proud citizen of Waco, Texas, I grew up here, I went to school here, and I am ashamed of the way I've been treated by my once loved city I called home. Today I want to share my story and experience that began August 31st concerning my loved puppy, Georgia. At 12 weeks old, Georgia and her three siblings have been unjustly labeled and deemed dangerous in the state of Texas, as the neighbors or ACO could not identify which two of the four puppies bit. So the city confiscated all four dogs, deemed them all dangerous, and their statement reads, because we do not know which one bit, they would all be deemed dangerous. I now have to register my dog as a dangerous dog, have a $100,000 insurance policy, along with a $50 annual fee for my dog, my puppy, who was identified, not identified as biting anybody. 
I am just an average citizen doing what, everything in my power to ensure the well-being of my canine family member who holds a special place in my heart throughout this challenging journey. I've encountered numerous obstacles while uh, trying to navigate a complex system. I've in, uh, conducted extensive research and leaned in on an invaluable support of the Humane Society staff. I've already sought justice through municipal court and I'm currently pursuing an appeal at the county court. Before this incident, I had never had to cross paths with animal control and my dogs have consistently received top-notch care and adhered to all the regulations. Although Georgia has not been spayed due to her age, I had already made plans to do so. Yet the treatment I received has left me feeling like I am perceived as incompetent, a criminal, and an irres irresponsible pet owner. The lack of transparency from the city of Waco has been nothing but troubling aspect of my ordeal. Despite the numerous attempts of access to public information that should be shed light on the situation and allow me to defend my case, all my requests have fallen on deaf ears. The lack of responsiveness was not limited to the public information request. Even my phone calls seeking assistance and clarification have been ignored. The opacity and communication of absence of readily available resources have compounded the challenges I face in this difficult situation, further deepening my sense of frustration and helplessness. More importantly, let, let's not forget the impact this has on my puppy, Georgia. Georgia is not a statistic or a case. She's a living being who brings love and joy into my life and countless others every day. This label has cast a shadow of uncertainty and potentially harm over her existence. It could ultimately lead her life being cut short in prospects that fills me with anguish and despair. Dogs get loose all the time. The only difference between my dog and or other dogs in Georgia is the simple fact that she could be ultimately euthanized for this. The contrast to the Humane Society staff has shown unwavering support, dedication, countless hours of resources to our case. They have even accommodated Georgia in their offices while I worked tirelessly to bring her home. Regrettably, the city of Waco has failed to extend the same courtesy, leaving me to ponder whether somebody with better connections to the city would have faced similar difficulties, hinting at a concerning classism issue. Atten additionally, I cannot ignore potential breed bias here. Georgia belongs to a breed often stigmatized as bully breeds and is raised concerned when the judge inquired brought inquired her breed prior to delivering a ruling. Is there an underlying breed bias embedded within the city? Uh, is there not litigation placed passed by the Texas Committee to prohibit unjust treatment and target, targeting specific breeds? In closing, I was told that the officer, the officer told me that neither victim could determine which dog bit, so all must be treated the same. There is not a guilty by association clause in the dangerous dog ordinance, yet all four dogs were considered guilty by association. Sure, with if you get your, your, your time, if you could wrap up your comments, please. Yep. Uh, the city confiscated my property without just cause because my, prop, my puppy was not identified as biting. That's all I have. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Karen Egos. Sorry about that. Hi, Mayor. Hi. Um, my name is Karen Eggetts. I'm at 511 Kings Row. Oh, I do have some. Tell me when I'm ready. It started already. Go ahead. Oh, good evening. On July 26th, a Waco police officer shot a dog at a homeless encampment. This incident made the news. KW2TX stated that the dog was shot one time when the dog charged the officer and that the dog was taken by ACO. The body cam footage obtained shows that all three of those statements given by the Waco PD are false. The body cam footage shows the dog was shot not once, but two times, as it walked, not charged, towards the officer. The dog was not taken by ACO and was instead found and carried to PetSmart by who, two homeless people who begged for help to save the dog, who was riddled with seven holes. It was citizen Lori DeCourt who stepped in and loaded the dog into our vehicle and drove it to the Waco shelter. After hearing about the shooting and learning there were seven holes in the dog, I was concerned how two shots could create seven holes, so I asked Commander Hyatt about the shooting. After getting an unprofessional, dismissive, and quite offensive response from him, I reached out to assisted city manager Holt, who referred me to Chief Victorian. I met with Chief Victorian and Sergeant Bowden to discuss the misinformation given by the Waco PD to KWTX, and I asked the Sergeant in Chief from whom, the PD, um, from whom at the PD does KWTX get their information. They both stated that it's from the PIO, who gave a generic statement. I said a police officer shot a dog and details are forthcoming is a generic statement. An officer fired one shot when the dog charged the officer that was later taken by ACO is not a generic response. It was a specific response, and it was false. False statements were given to the media by the city's PIO, Sierra Shipley. Both the sergeant and chief dismissed my concerns about the seven holes in the dog and the misinformation given to the media and continued to state that it was a generic response. 
The chief excused it away by saying that Ms. Shipley later corrected her statement with KWTX, but KWTX did not print it. In our meeting, the chief was bothered by my continued questioning the fact that her PIO gave false information to the media and that she didn't seem to want to find out why and how. That's a problem. The chief should demand accountability from her officers and her PIO about misinformation being conveyed to the public. We as citizens rely on the police department's PIO to convey accurate information. The chief was not willing to look into the matter that her PIO gave false information to the media. And as a citizen, I refuse to accept that as a response. I again told her that it's her job to find out why her officers gave false information to the media. I asked her to reach out to Officer Witt, the officer who shot the dog, and Sergeant Ashworth to get their statements, and she refused. I asked her to reach out to P.O. Shibley while I was meeting with her, and she refused. She refused to get to the bottom of why her PIO gave false information to the media. Citizens to know, need, deserve to know why um, Sergeant Ashworth told uh, uh, a PIO Shipley, and we need to know what Officer Witt told the sergeant. In a nutshell, either the city's police department intentionally gave their PIO false information to relay to the public, or the city's PIO made up a story or intentionally relayed false information. Both of these possibilities are not acceptable. To find out what happened, it's as simple as the chief asking Sierra Shipley from where she received her information and what information she received from the officer and her sergeant. Yet the chief refused to ask her or investigate and was unconcerned about the false reporting. As a taxpayer, I must insist that we get to the bottom of it. Ms. Agus, you're about out of your time if you okay. could wrap up. We need to have confidence that the information provided by the police department is transparent and truthful and that the reporting by the media is reliable because the chief was unconcerned and refused to find out why <coughs> false information was given and was not interested in finding out how that happened. I no longer have confidence in our police department. Do please wrap up your time. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Um, next, we have Daryl Evans. Good evening, Mayor, Council. My name is Daryl Evans. And in 1981, I came up with this, the uh, Waco logo that you see right here in front of you. I was going to Cedar Ridge Elementary, and uh, my teacher, Mrs. Yarbrough, Helen Yarbrough, took the drawing from me in an art contest. I'm uh, trying to get to the end of it, but it's, it's been stolen from me. I had it, uh, I done it in an art contest <clears throat> when, when I was eight years old. Uh, this is new to me coming up here and talking in front of everybody. I'm just gotta forgive me, but uh, I'm trying to get to the end of it. Thank you. Thanks, sir. <laughs> is there anyone else here who'd like to speak during the hearing of visitors portion of the agenda? If not, are there any announcements the council would like to make? Are there any council uh, requests for future agenda items? If not, there being no further uh, business, this meeting is adjourned at 6.57 p.m. Thanks, everybody.